Hello. In this video, I'll be teaching you how to write and identify equivalent fractions in simplest form. Just as a quick review from our previous two lessons in Chapter 6, Lessons 1 and 2, you can tell if two fractions are equivalent if they have the same multiplication relationship. For example, 1 half is equivalent to 2 fourths because the numerator 1, or the numerator 2, has twice as many parts as 1, and the denominator 4 has twice as many parts as 2. So if you have the same multiplication relationship, you can have equivalent fractions. And today, we're going to be focusing on a, a special type of equivalent fraction called simplest form. We're going to start by writing a fraction in simplest form. And basically what simplest form means is you're writing the fraction with the least amount of pieces as possible. And we'll also see that you can tell if two fractions are in simplest form if their only common factor is 1. But let's take a look at, at an example to start. Let's start with the fraction 2 sixths. And we'll draw a picture of a uh, picture to show here 2 sixths. Okay, we'll start with a, we'll do a pie. All right. Here we go. And I'm going to go ahead and shade two sixths of this picture here. So there's one sixth and two sixths. Okay. Now, what I want to do in simplest form is I want to see if I can combine these pieces so that they would become fewer pieces. Right now I have two pieces that are shaded. If there's a, I want to see if there's a way I can write this fraction using fewer than two pieces out of six. And I can get that by combining. And you'll remember from the previous video, I'll get more pieces if I multiply my numerator and denominator. But if I want simplest form, I want the fewest pieces. So I don't want to multiply. I want to divide. So looking at these, my numerator and denominator, 2 and 6, I want to see, is there a number I can divide both of them by? Maybe they have a common factor. Well, I notice they're both even, which means they're divisible by 2. So what I'll do is I'll divide my numerator by 2, and I'll divide my denominator by 2 as well. And what that gets me, 2 divided by 2 equals 1. And 6 divided by 2 equals 3. And what that would look like in the picture form, and basically what I would be doing, let's go ahead and make it, grab this real quickly. And let's bring that over here. Okay, so there's the same fraction that we had before, 2 sixths and 2 sixths. But when I combine these pieces together, which I'm going to put these pieces together now. So I'm taking my 2 sixths and I'm putting together, and if you look carefully, now they look like, looks like a different piece. Let me fill this in. Now, see, it's no longer two parts that are shaded. It's one part that's shaded. And because I have a fewer uh, parts dividing here, what I could do as well, um, see now this is one part, and I want to make these other parts the same size. So I'm just going to get rid of that line right there. And get rid of this line, because I was dividing by two. So I actually have fewer parts, so I have to get rid of these lines here. But remember, I have the same, basically the same amount that's shaded. I just shaded this one a little more colorfully. So two-sixths, See, it's the same amount as one-third. And one-third uses fewer pieces than two-sixths. And so this is actually my simplest form. And we'll explain exactly why it's the simplest form pretty soon. But um, it's, simplest, it's a simpler form, and it is simplest form, because it uses fewer pieces. This is two pieces shaded out of six. This is one piece shaded out of three. This fraction here is in simplest form. And we'll go over why, actually, right now. I can just take a look at the factors. The factors of 1, well, the only factor of 1 is 1. 
And the factors of 3, ways to multiply, 1 and 3. And you can see the only factor they have in common is 1. And when the only factor they have in common is 1, you know that that fraction is in simplest form because it has the fewest number of pieces and the only common factor is 1. Let's try another example. Uh, I might try this example here. Um, let's try 10 fifteenths. 10 fifteenths. Now I want to ask myself that first question, are they both even? Well, 10 is even, but 15 is not. 15 is not a multiple of 2. I might ask, are they divisible by any other number? If I think about my divisibility rules, I see that this ends in a 0, and this ends in a 5. There's a divisibility rule of 5 if a number ends in 5 or 0. So I know that I can divide each of these by 5. Let's see what my equivalent fraction would be. 10 divided by 5 is 2. And 15 divided by 5 is 3. So I've written the same fraction because I'm using a division relationship this time. Same relationship with the numerator and denominator. 10 to 2 pieces, 2 pieces, 2 parts, is much fewer than 10. And 3 parts in the whole is fewer than 15. So I definitely have a simpler fraction here in 2 thirds. But is it the simplest form? Well, let's write the factors of 2 and 3 and see. Factors of 2, I can do 1 times 2. Factors of 3, 1 and 3. So the only factors they have in common are 1 and that's it, 1. So I know this fraction is in simplest form because the only common factor is 1. And if we go back to the beginning of the problem, we could have done that as well with 10 and 15. See what would happen if we did that. 10, 15. Let's see factors. 1 times 10, 2 times 5. 1, 2, 5, and 10. For 15, 1 times 15 and 3 times 5. Now you should notice something here. When you take a look at the common factors, of course they have 1 in common. It's not writing for me right now. Let's try it again. There we go. <laughs> and But you see they also have a common factor of 5. I might call that the greatest common factor between 10 and 15 is 5. And that's actually a clue for which number you want to divide by. The greatest common factor was 5. So if I divided by 5, and I didn't know a divisibility rule for that, um, I could divide by 5 and get to the simplest form. This one's the simplest form because it uses fewer pieces, and the only common factor between 2 and 3 is 1. All right, I'll just give an example here of how to tell if a fraction's in simplest form. Let's take a look at this example first. Um, let's go 3 ninths. Is it in simplest form? Remember, the way to tell is to write the factors and see if 1 is the only common factor. So the factors of 3, 1 and 3. Factors of 9, 1, 3, and 9. Is the only common factor 1? No. You can say they have a common factor of 3 as well. So they have 1 as a common factor and 3 as a common factor. So is 3 ninths in simplest form? No. No, it's not. It is not in simplest form. Now if I wanted to put it in simplest form, I could use this information. Divide by 3, divide by 3. But in answering this question, 3 ninths is not in simplest form. Let's try another one. Let's try... Um, Hmm, let's try 7 fifteenths. It's an interesting one. Uh, 7 fifteenths. Let's see if it's in simplest form. Well, let's check the factors of 7 and the factors of 15. Factors of 7, 1 and 7. Factors of 15, 1 and 15, 3 and 5. Hmm. Common factors. Well, they have 1 as a common factor. 
Anything else? 3, 5, 15, 7. Nope, nothing in common. So 7 fifteenths is, yes, it is, use a capital letter this time, yes, it is in simplest form because the only common factor, the only common factor is 1. All right, now we can take this over to now if we're figuring out whether or not fractions are equivalent because we already know how to make equivalent fractions. Now we can use it simplest form to help us with that. So let's try an example here. Let's try 3 sixths and 5 tenths. This is especially important because previously we would tell if fractions are equivalent by looking for a multiplication relationship. But you see, 3 and 5 do not have a multiplication, multiplication relationship, nor do 6 and 10. So using a multiplication relationship, there isn't one, a clear whole number one. And so we're going to just be guessing if we try to use that strategy. That's why using simplest form is a great strategy. So let's take 3 sixths. 3 sixths. Let's see. They are both multiples of 3, so I know I can divide by 3. So the simplest form of 3 sixths is 3 divided by 3, 1, 6 divided by 3, half, 1 half. And I know it's the simplest form because 1 is the only factor of 1, and 2 has the factors of 1 and 2. The only common factor is 1. What about 5 tenths? Let's see. 5 and 10. Well, hopefully you noticed that 5 and 10 are both multiples of 5. So I want to divide by 5 right away. Let's see what happens. 5 divided by 5, 1. 10 divided by 5, 2. So not only is 3 sixths equivalent to 1 half, but 5 tenths is equivalent to 1 half. So though we did not see a clear, easy multiplication relationship with whole numbers, which we've been using, Technically, there is a, a multiplication relationship here, just not with whole numbers. But we use simplest form. So 3 sixths is really equivalent to 1 half. And 5 tenths is equivalent to 1 half. That means they are equivalent to each other. Let me try this one more time. There we go. 3 sixths is equivalent to 5 tenths because they have the same simplest form. Let's try one other example similar to that. And the example we'll use, we'll try 3 twelfths and 2 fourths. Let's move them up here this time so we have a little bit more space to work. Whoop. Come up here. There you go. Okay. So 3 twelfths and 2 fourths. Again, look at my denominators. I have, there's a times 3 relationship because 12 parts is 3 times as many as 4. But I don't see a times 3 relationship. I actually know there's not a times 3 relationship on my numerators. So I could right away tell that these are not equivalent. And for other reasons, we'll learn in the future. But for now, we want to use simplest form. So let's go 3 twelfths. 3 twelfths. Let's see. They're not both even, so I can't divide by 2. They're both multiples of 3, though, so I can divide by 3. And I get 1, 12 divided by 3, fourth, 1 fourth. And actually, I can stop right here without even using simplest form. I'm going to go ahead and do that. But this fraction, 3 twelfths, is equivalent to 1 fourth. The fraction that I'm, com being com that I'm comparing with is 2 fourths. Can 1 fourth be equivalent to 2 fourths? No, 2 fourths is twice as many. So I know right now they're not equivalent. Just to prove it, we'll take a look at 2 fourths and put it in simplest form too. Because on the previous example, those two fractions had the same simplest form. Let's see this one. 2 fourths, mm, they're both even. I'll divide by 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So we see the simplest form of 3 twelfths is one fourth, and the simplest form of two fourths is one half. So they do not have the same simplest form. Therefore, we can say that they are not 
equivalent. They do not have the same simplest form. I'm going to take a look at some examples you might see on a test for simplest form, how it might be asked. Just read that to yourself. Notice it asks simplest form. And you can pause the video and try to figure that one out here. Here's another one. Jamal made a list of fractions. He asked Will to find the fraction written in simplest form. You've got to test each of them. See which one is in simplest form. Which one only has one as a common factor. Here's the last one. In the school band, 6 24ths of the members play the trumpet. In simplest form, what fraction of the band plays the trumpet? So what is this fraction, 6 24ths, written in simplest form? All right. Have fun. Thanks for watching.